Hello everyone and welcome back to the Common Sense Crypto Channel. As with you always, this is Rich doing another video today on XRP. So I hope you're all having a wonderful day today. Wherever you are in this great, great world, we're going to talk about XRP. And once again, this is the one day chart. We're sitting here just above 53 cents. It was a green day for XRP. It was also a green day for Bitcoin. But like I told you in yesterday's video, I don't even have to look at the XRP chart or the Bitcoin chart to see what's going on with crypto. Because if you look at the DXY, you see it breaking down right here. And that's why crypto started to move upward. Now, I expect after the 2024 election for the DXY to really start to break down. And as that happens, that could get us going once again. Because Bitcoin would start to take off. And as Bitcoin takes off and the Bitcoin dominance falls at the same time, that will lead us into alt season. And that's what I'm expecting next. Now... Everywhere I seen this bill, people tied Bitcoin to it. It does cover Bitcoin, but it doesn't mention Bitcoin one time in this entire bill. So the state of Pennsylvania has passed Bitcoin rights in the House by a sweeping majority. But like I said, it says digital assets. And the bill is even called the Digital Assets Author Authorization Act. And I read through this entire bill. So first they talk about what blockchain is, what digital assets are. Then it goes on to talk about self-hosted wallets or a hardware wallet. And I really liked that because that covers retail investors. It says, accept digital assets as a method of payment for legal goods and services. Maintain self-custody of a digital asset using a self-hosted wallet or hardware wallet. Then it talks about taxation. And I really like this as well. Because it says additional taxation is prohibited. The Commonwealth or a municipality may not impose an additional tax withholding assessment or charge on a digital asset that is based solely on the use of the digital asset as a method of payment to purchase legal goods or services. They covered everything in this bill. And then they talk about the blockchain protocol, decentralization, digital asset, a digi decentralized virtual currency, cryptocurrency, native electronic asset, including a decentralized stablecoin or non-fungible token or any other digital-only asset that confers economic, proprietary, or access rights or powers. The term does not include a central bank digital currency or any other government-controlled digital-only asset. So they even said this bill does not cover central bank digital currency, CBDC. Hardware wallet, they even explain what that is. Self-hosted wallet as well. I really like this bill. And I think it's going to, it, it protects retail investors more than anything. But this is going on in other states as well. 50% of states adopt the first legal framework for digital asset ownership. The Uniform Commercial Code is a standardized set of laws designed to streamline business transactions across the United States, simplifying sales, loans, and contracts across state lines. A recent UCC update includes regulations for digital assets such as cryptocurrencies, ensuring they can be legally bought, sold, or used as collateral under clear and enforceable guidelines. As documented below, 
25 states have now adopted the UCC crypto amendment, marking the halfway point in its implementation across the United States. Before stablecoins and digital assets gain federal recognition, they are being legitimized at the state level through these UCC laws, which are the first to provide ownership protections for digital asset holders. We're halfway there. The reason I like when retail investors are protected is because generations from now, people are going to be buying cryptocurrencies. You know, it's not going to end with XRP and a handful of cryptocurrencies that make it through crypto regulations. As new technologies come about in the future, there's going to be new cryptocurrencies tied to those technologies. And I want to see future generations have the right to custody those cryptocurrencies as well. This is our shot. This is our time to make a lot of money off of crypto. But future generations should have that same opportunity. You know what crypto really does for people? It helps them break away from the matrix. It helps them break away from their 9 to 5 job. It helps them break away from the cycle that you're born into. You know, from the time you're born, you're told, go to school, go to college, get a job, buy a house, work 40 years, and then have a few years of retirement before you die. Crypto changes all of that. Now, you through investing in the right cryptocurrencies, you can retire in your 20s, in your 30s, in your 40s. It doesn't matter. It allows you to break that cycle. And that's what I really love about crypto. And like I said, I want future generations to be able to do that as well. Ripple CEO, U.S. will be more pro-crypto following the election. So Brad is expecting a major reset to happen here inside the United States. I think he's right because now we have politicians saying that they want to have crypto regulations in place by the end of this year. They also want to have stablecoin regulations as well. I think the government is quicker to pass stablecoin regulations because that will benefit the government. But I think crypto regulations are going to be very important going forward as far as pushing innovation ahead. And once we get those regulations, that will lead to mass adoption. And Brad even said it doesn't matter who wins the presidential election. He still thinks that crypto is going to push full steam ahead. You know, that sounds a lot like BlackRock. Because I even said it in a previous video, the real winner in the 2024 election is going to be BlackRock. They're going to win either way. U.S. state regulators report a sharp rise in tech and digital asset related investigations. So they talk about the major crackdown on crypto, but they're saying that people are still getting ripped off and getting scammed inside of crypto. And they expect an even bigger crackdown in the future. You know, they're not going to stop this until all the scammers are gone. But, you know, every single day, people fall for these scams. And I keep telling you, if something sounds too good to be true, guess what? It's too good to be true. Ripple is not going to double your XRP holdings. And whenever people are trying to tell you, Oh, well, you know, get into this or get into that. And there's it's all hyped up. You know you are going to end up losing your money. It's so easy to just buy the right cryptocurrencies, sit back and do nothing. Just wait to get rich. That's all you need to do at this point. The most interesting question and answer in crypto this year. Do you think about selling Ripple to a large financial firm. Take a listen to what Brad says here. I, I want to switch gears for a second here. Got to get your 
opinion on what we just saw just this week. Uh, eye-popping deal, really, for our Stripe to acquire a stablecoin platform, a more than billion dollar deal in this industry. When you look at a deal like that, do you say, okay, maybe we sell Ripple or, and, or at least partner with another large financial technology firm to expand in the world of stablecoins? Look, I look at that as a very positive sign that this industry is just coming more and more mainstream, more and more integrated, and in more and more demand in different payment flows. So I view it as a very positive thing for the industry. Uh, as, as you probably know, you know, Ripple is about to release our own stablecoin called RLUSD. I think the stablecoin market is going to continue to grow, and I think Stripe is clearly indicating they think the same. Brad doesn't even answer the question, but I don't think... Brad sees any plans on Ripple selling out to a large financial firm. In fact, I just see Ripple getting stronger from here. I think Ripple's going to be bigger than Amazon at some point in the future. I think they're going to emerge as a bank at some point. Because every direction that Ripple has taken leads to them becoming a bank at some point. And I see this being more likely to happen. I wouldn't be surprised if either SBI or Ripple come to the rescue and buy R3. SBI R3 Japan company LTD already exists. So Intel backed blockchain startup R3 weighs options including a sale. Could you imagine if Ripple acquired R3? And I think the chances of that happening are more than 50%. SBI acquiring R3 also makes sense going forward. We're going to have to wait and see what happens from here. But Ripple is financially well off. Remember Brad said they have a billion dollars in cash. And look at all the acquisitions that Ripple has already had. You know, and they have all those money transmitter license as well inside the United States and in other countries overseas. So I don't see Ripple going anywhere. I just see them getting stronger over time. Ripple's beef with City, a timeline. During World Economic Forum in Davos in 2023, Brad stated that Ripple is competing with the liquidity of City and messaging of Swift. Ripple purchased custody platform Medico in 2023, whose City was a customer of. Shortly after Ripple's purchase, City stated that they were reviewing their partnership with Medico. And now you can no longer find City on Ripple's custody partnership page. Today, we found out City is terminating Brad's banking relationship because of his involvement with the crypto industry. There's an old video of Ashish Birla where he states that City will be Ripple's last customer. City is one of the world's largest correspondent banks, so it's not a great surprise. Here's what I see. City has worked with Ripple in the past. Going forward, City needs Ripple more than Ripple needs City. Just think of all the other banks utilizing RippleNet and XRP, getting the upper hand on the competition. If City is their competition, they have no choice but to work with Ripple as well and utilize XRP as well. But what I wanted to show you in today's video at the beginning was what I think is going to happen next is the DXY is going to start to break down. And as it does, we're going to start to see a massive run up for crypto. And that's what's going to lead us into alt season. Now, if there's going to be a crash in 2025, like everyone's predicting, you could expect a major crash to happen on the DXY. That can easily push crypto to prices we could only dream about. You know, people are expecting XRP to follow 2018. They're saying expect a three-digit XRP. 
I've been being conservative, saying we're going to come in between $20 and $30. Now, what else could happen is this. Ripple launches RLUSD in the middle of alt season. That would change things because now we could see real value pushing the price of XRP even higher. Plus, ISO going live. Stock market crash could possibly happen. A lot of people think the smart money would come out of the stock market and into crypto. A lot of big things can happen during this run. So three digits, in my opinion, are still on the table for XRP. But until it happens, you got to stay patient, stay positive, and let's get rich together. With that said, I'm going to wrap up this video. I want to thank you all for watching. I appreciate all of you. I'll see you in the next one. Have a great night.